going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Ryan Pineda Show. Today, I have what I would call the best sales trainer I have ever met. And this guy came into Las Vegas with an entire posse of other sales trainers who were absolutely hyped. They're actually training my team right now while we film this podcast. This man is on YouTube. He is the forefront authority on sales. He's got over 300,000 people on his sales platform right now this moment. Got none other than Andy Elliott. What's up, dude? Hey, number one, I'm grateful to be here. I know that you watch this podcast because you get a lot of value out of it. Everybody sucks till they don't. Everybody starts somewhere until they rise to the top. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people along the way, the reason why they don't go to the next level is because they just don't learn skill. That's it. And you're a student. You've mastered the, the craft of learning. You've learned to love to learn. Am I right? Correct. So we train 325,000 salespeople, and I'm going to tell you why we're able to train that many people. Number one, because I sucked. I stuttered. I literally was the least likely to make it. I mean, I'm just telling you, like the least likely to make it. And what I did is that I started learning from somebody. And what happened is everything changed. Within one year, had a brand new house, had a brand new Corvette, I'm 19 years old. And by the way, whether I needed to buy that or I needed to save it, I didn't know because I didn't have any guidance, but I could get things that I normally couldn't get. I could create my own lifestyle. And I've watched guys just like Ryan right here, start at the bottom, lay it all out there on the line literally go and attack and give everything you have you study everybody in the world the world's your library if you know what you're looking for it'll give you what you're looking for right and if you don't know something you study it so as you're watching this podcast i promise you this if you sell something which you do you're selling your kids to go to bed at night you're selling your wife to refall in love with you every single day right you're selling your team to do what it is you want to do you're selling the world on your vision your dream right mm -hmm. you're always selling we're going to talk about Selling, because I believe that selling is everything, and obviously this is Ryan's show, but I'm grateful to be here. But I'm going to tell you, if you'll consciously pay attention, and I say that because a lot of people watch you for entertainment. They're like, oh, this guy's killing it. I look up to him. He's amazing. They can have the same life as you and better. Matter of fact, I've talked to Ryan. Last night at dinner, one of his goals was for his people to be 10 times better than him. But you got to consciously be aware and listen, because if you don't, you're not going to grow. And every single day you recreate and you get better. Would you agree? I agree. And that's what this is about. So I'm grateful to be here. This guy's amazing. He's 33, 32. Just turned 33. 33 yeah. years old. I'm 42. This guy's the future. And by the way, you're the future. So if you're watching this right now, take notes, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. Don't just watch this podcast. And by the way, if you're driving, watch it tonight later. Consciously pay attention. I promise you today's the day that you're going to grow. I love it. I love it. And 100% agree. One thing I didn't realize as I got into my business career was that Literally everything is selling, you know, yeah. I, I was an introvert. I did not want to talk to people. I did not do very well when I first became a realtor in 2010 because I was just afraid to talk to people being introverted. And I just figured that people would be smart enough to buy the things that I knew were smart, right? Yeah. Like I remember showing houses that were $80,000 that were, you know, over 300 grand a couple of years before, you know, and then the market tanked and I'm like, guys, buy this house like yeah, it's no such brand. a good deal but i didn't have the sales skills like other than i knew in my mind it was great and i knew they should do it but i could not convince them otherwise yeah and i love that and by the way if you're paying attention look every i said in the beginning everybody sucks till they don't right so everything that you've learned in your life you've acquired which means an introvert right can turn mm -hmm. into an extrovert would you agree right let me tell you why selling is so important to learn because number one you need to be extroverted but you can still be an introvert i'm an introvert me and my wife we used to go to dinner literally they would order the wrong food right and I wouldn't speak up mm -hmm. I would eat the wrong food because I didn't want to make a, a fuss does that make sense right that was me but when I was in the automotive space I destroyed it if I was on my pavement my lot my place I owned that that was my territory right mm -hmm. but once I walked outside of that territory I didn't want to talk to anybody but what I learned one day I was talking to my wife I walked by a lady I didn't smile at her and I told my wife I said but what's that lady's problem you know mm -hmm. what she said she said well number one why didn't you initiate a smile and say hey how you doing and I thought, well, I don't, I mean, that's just not the way I am, but she's in a bad mood. She goes, no, listen to me. What do you want in life? What do you want? Do you want people to want to like you? Do you want people to want to be around you? Look, you're a sales guy, Andy. She's like, do you think people buy in a good mood or a bad mood? Look, think about the buying state. Let's think about it. You call out, you're wanting to buy your somebody's home or whatever, or you're wanting to sell a product. Do you think that person's going to do what it is that you want them to do and agree with you if they're in a bad mood? No. So they're going to mirror your state. They're going to mirror your attitude. They can tell whether you're smiling, smiling with your eyes, having the best day of your life. And this is good for them. Well, guess what? My wife, that day, everything changed. I said, you know what? So you're watching this energy that we have. And by the way, it's passion. And I always say this. I turn my pain into passion. People that are capable for the most, the people that can grow the most, are the people that have been through the most crap. 
I'm telling you, and you take that pain, you study, you learn, you use it as passion. And I'm going to tell you in a society out there right now that really doesn't care and it's the truth, you will stand out and within a couple few years, you'll be at the top. Mm -hmm. So I was going to tell you just like you're an extrovert, introverted, so am I. But guess what? I decided from that day forward, never am I going to be an introvert again. So now when I walk by someone, I'm always saying, hey, hope you're having the best day of your life. How you doing? Yeah. Why? Because I want people to feel great. By the way, don't care about money, care about people. You'll never worry about money. It's just the truth. Be yeah. really good at dealing with people. So I was going to say, anybody watching this, a rule you need to do is you need everybody that you walk by, build a relationship with them. Say hi to them. Do the things that we don't like. Everything you want in life is on the other side of being uncomfortable. Right. You wouldn't be where you're at, right? You didn't want to learn YouTube. You didn't want to learn social media. You didn't yeah. want to be on a camera. But guess what? You knew that was what needed to be done. Mr. I don't feel like it. He never became anything. Yeah. And yeah. that's it. So No, 100%. It comes back to doing the things that you may naturally not want to do, but you know you need to do them. And that's going to be the difference of whether you're successful or not. But I'll tell you, for everyone listening, you know, I met Andy. We, well, we actually met at my Future Flipper event for the first time um, briefly. Um, he came with it was Bradley. Amazing. Yeah, it was a great event. Brad spoke and gave me a lot of crap, and it was great. But, uh, you know, we ended up um, saying hi, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, we got a book for him to come here to Vegas to do this podcast, and we had dinner last night. And the first thing that happens is his entire team comes up to me and just, like, making me feel so welcome, dude. They're, like, giving me hugs. A couple of them, like, I don't know what they were trying to do, but it was all good. Like, I felt the love. And the day as we go to the office, they literally shook every person's hand in the office introduced themselves, brought the energy, hyped them up, and you did the same, you know? And it's like, sometimes a lot of us, you know, whether you're just a, a normal person or not, like for a guy like you, who's accomplished so much, to go and introduce yourself to every single person says a lot. It's like, doesn't matter how much success you have or how big you've gotten, you're still doing the same things you're telling people to do right now for yourself. That's right, and I wanna say something. When you go and meet somebody, is your energy infectious? I mean, I'm asking like, what are you infecting people with, right? Look, you get to choose who's around you in your life. I always say take inventory of your life, okay? I want to be a person that when I'm around somebody, they never forget me. They never forget me. And it's, by the way, it's my job to make that happen. That's not going to happen accidentally. People don't accidentally get successful, okay? Right. People win on purpose. You know why? Because they have an intent. Their intent is mine with everybody is when I meet you, number one, you are important. You are significant. We want you to have a great life. We want to make a lot of money. Sure, that's great, all right? Why do I want a lot of money? Because I want my family to have a great lifestyle, period. Mm -hmm. End of story. I want all my people that work for me to make a lot of money. But I want, just like you want, to change the way that the world has worked forever. So many people have so many low self-limiting beliefs. They have lids on themselves. So guess what? What do we need to do? Well, number one, we need to be like a true one percenter, not be like the other 99 percent. So what does everybody else do when they go and they meet other people? Nothing. They're entitled. Dude, your ego is burying you. You're nobody. You could go back to being nobody tomorrow. Right. Every day I go back to zero. I want to say this right. Every day we go back to zero. Zero. Look, I tell my wife all the time, by the way, she's the money person. She hides all, I mean, she didn't hide it. I asked her to hide it. Right. You know why? Because I want to live like I'm broke. Yo, you'll get comfy. Yeah, and I don't want it. By the way, like, listen to me. The second I get comfortable, I'm finished. I tell her every day, I'm after the journey, not mm -hmm. after a destination. Right. You know, I talked to you last night. You go, hey, whether I become a billionaire, um, whether I become this or that or whatever, you know what? I don't care. You go, I want to win. Yep. This is a game. Mm -hmm. The question is, are you playing the game to win or are you playing the game to lose? I read a book Tim Grover wrote called winning and then Great it was book. relentless yep. relentless said does winning recognize you like does it like look whether you have the brain analytical brain to grow and do systems and processes and efficiency and that's your strong point and you're a great you know social media person or whether you're a hard-working sales guy you're willing to put in all the hours you know you're willing to you know show people massive love whatever your skill is what and by the way whatever skill you don't have right now you can learn it find your leaks find your leaks I would say if everybody's writing down something right now write down two things number one leaks write down opportunities. Opportunities are things you're currently not doing that you know you need to do. Look, if you want to be like this guy right here, if you want to have a massive reach, we'll call it just reach to right. people because people need to know who you are, what you do, how great you are, what you do and where you're at. Right. If you're going to do something, shouldn't if everybody's going to, everybody at some point is going to buy or sell a house. So if you're in real estate, everybody should know who you are, right? Exactly. If they don't, shame on you because you have social media. Right. So all this stuff that he's doing, well, guess what? You just watch. Anyone else could have done it. Yeah. And they can still do it right now. 100%. There's so many people that are... And by the way, listen to me, it's going to suck. It's going to be hard. You're either going to be obsessed with winning or obsessed with losing. And by the way, training, you know, and we'll call that learning, right? Like investing in yourself. People like at the future flipper event, right? Those people came to get in that room, to look up your skirt, to see what it is that you know. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Because you've spent all this time, right? Like 10 years grinding it, learning how to make these deals, make these buys, what to do, what you should, what, what all the things that should happen. And I'm, 
just talking about that event specifically. Right. Dude, to pay $2,500, $5,000, $10,000 and be in that room, that's nothing. Yeah. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? One month of mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, get in the room with people that is are in a good location that can help you and then also that have a good vehicle. Like, you know, if somebody's watching your podcast, obviously they're interested in the things that you're interested in, right? Right. You're like-minded people. I mean, I'm just telling you, I like to watch people on social media. I like to learn digitally, but also there's nothing like sitting in the room just like we are right now, mm -hmm. watching a person talk, speak, seeing the way they really believe in their business, and then going home and duplicating that and taking that back into your own life. Well, the other part of it too is seeing is believing. You know, a lot of yeah. people, they read a book or they listen to a podcast or whatever. They're like, yeah, you know, that's great. And they, they somewhat believe. But the moment you walk into either of our offices, you go to this event, you see other people having success with the trainings and everything else. You're like, dude, if he could do it, I can do it. Like he wasn't that far away from where I'm at today that long ago. That's it. And and you talk about like, look, here's the deal. I always say this in two years from now, there's loser dialogues and there's winner dialogue. Okay. A winner dialogue is like, well, I can't afford not to do it. I can't look up in two years and not afford not to be there. Right. I, well, I can't afford not to be there. The like, cost of regret. Yeah. Like, there's, like it can't happen. Like winners say it can't happen. Losers say, well, what if it don't work? Right. right? right. Well, number one, you've got a problem with yourself. You've got a problem with yourself. And I think right now in all of our businesses and yours, mine and everything, it's all mindset. Mm. That's all it is, man. I mean, I'm going to tell you this. What value is the skill? What value is it to teach everybody something if they don't believe in themselves? Yeah. You know, Bradley, which is a good friend of both of ours, he always says, you'll never out earn your own self-worth. Mm. And I think everybody should tattoo that on themselves because at the end of the day, you got to like yourself. You got to like who you are. If you, if you wake up, just like our guys walked in here today and they're firing your staff up and they're rock and roll, whether they're the best in the world or whether they're not, whether they are or they're not, they believe they are. Right. And if you just believe that, could you imagine, I mean, you would 10 X your outcome. Right. Right. And then by the way, like people would actually see that you're somebody that they want to be around. Mm -hmm. You can't deny that it's great to be around people that are in a great state and a good mood. And then I'll say something else also. You train to be the best. You learn to be the best. I said consciously pay attention in the beginning. Look, if you're undeniably the best in your industry at what you do, which you can be right now, okay? And by the way, if you're an underdog and you're watching this, look, underdogs take down Goliaths every single day, mm -hmm. okay? That's the story I live for. And I'm going to tell you this, just like you came from nothing, you're probably out there ready to partner with the people that are winning, that are on the top. But you know one of the things? He's always looking for the guy who's ready to start. Just like you started, maxed your credit cards out, went all in. The biggest risk you ever take is not taking any risk at all. Mm -hmm. You believe. Yep. You knew there was no backing up. Once your back's against the wall, you find out who you're made of. 100%. And guess what? That's why you are who you are today. And the people that are watching you know that you're not fake. You're real. And at the end of the day, all that anybody wants to do is be around real people because there's a shortage of that in the world. Yep. So. 100%, man. And I, I totally agree with all those points. I mean, you brought up so many different things that, man, it, everyone's going to have to listen to this twice, at least, like Good. at a bare minimum. Because That's why I told them, write it down. <laughs> yeah, write it down. Um, this is winning. Yeah, because you're giving them so many nuggets that probably are going through people's ears that they're not even realizing what you're saying. And it's just like, it's so true that for you to win, you have to be willing to be the best. And will you be the best? I mean, odds are you might not be, but if you practice and you prepare and you believe like that, you're going to be the best version of you, whatever that ends up being, right? And I can tell you for me, I don't go into anything unless I truly believe I can be the best. If not, I just don't do it. There's no in between. There's not like, yeah, I'm going to go do this half-heartedly and we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, I don't play games I don't feel like I can win. Yeah, like I only, yeah. I want to play fixed rigged games that yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to win this and yeah. there ain't nothing anyone can do about it. Yeah, my wife, I only choose the games I know I'm going to win. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way. And then, I, but I want to say this, this game of life, right? This game of life, we'll call that a game. Yeah. That's a game that everybody can win. Yeah. They really can. And, and when I say this, like, I think there's multiple areas that create winners, like your family. Look, I'm going to ask, whatever you put into something is what you get out of it, right, Ryan? Right. Okay, so I want to talk about a couple things. Number one, if you're not taking care of your house, you're not taking care of your wife, you're not taking care of your kids, you're not going to take care of your business, mm -hmm. okay? And then if you're not taking care of your business and you're not giving everything you got, at the end of the day, winning won't recognize you, you're a fraud, and it will leave you. So if you're taking care of business and you're going all in, when you come in at the end of the day, guess what your wife's going to see? When you come into the front door, she's going to see a fulfilled man or your husband's going to see a fulfilled woman that gave everything they got, laid it out on the table, and who can't respect that? Mm -hmm. Look, that is how winning gets done. What layout, whether it's spiritual, financial, and I, I'm a big physical health person, which I know you're an athlete.
to leave. Yeah. And by the way, some of you, like your next journey to going to higher success will be to exercise and to work out. By the way, when you work out, you're in a better mood for the next 12 hours. And you're big on that. You told me one of the very first things you said was, yeah, we all work out together. We got a gym in the office. Like we have to work out before we go to work. And you, you just got to pump in before this podcast, dude. I can already see the veins popping out and everything, man. Yeah, no, we're jacked up. And I want to say this. <laughs> hey, but listen, there was a time that I wasn't in great shape. I said everybody sucked until they don't. Look, I'm going to tell you this. When I was 32 years old, I'm 42 now. I was a GM of a dealership. I was killing it. And literally, I'm going to tell you this. This is why I told you to take care of your wife, your kids, your family, and everything. Um, I was working from 7 a.m. in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. I was killing it, mm -hmm. making more money than I ever made in my life. Man, I thought I was doing great. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't taking care of my family. Mm -hmm. And business was everything to me. Now, I'm going to tell you this. My wife taught me a lesson. She said, don't be a one-dimensional man, okay? I come home one night. I'm killing it. You know, she's heated up my food for the 19th time. I kept telling her, I'm going to be home. 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 Most supportive woman in the world. But what she is, is she's my real best friend. She said, we've learned to live without you. You just, you don't come home. Mm -hmm. You're always working. Mm -hmm. And I thought as a man, like that was what was going to make her proud of me. And that was going to make me proud of me was by making a lot of money. I lost my health. Listen, I had love handles. I got fat. I'm just telling you. And like, and by the way, like, I mean, this isn't about health, but I want to tell you, you need to be healthy because what's the value of making a whole bunch of money and have somebody else come in and mar marry your wife and kids because you die early. Okay. I'm not interested in that. I want to be around for a long time. I want to live a long time. I want my kids to look to, up to me as a great dad. And she goes, Andy, you know, you have this thing where like, you can only have your family. You can only have business. You can only have the gym. You're always giving yourself ultimatums. Like if I get this one, I can't have that. She goes, you're one dimensional man. She goes, you need to understand this. You can have everything you want, everything you want. Like everybody that's out there that has the life that you want has the same 24 hours that you got. You're making excuses. Knock it off. Mm. Guess what? Dude, she punches me right in the mouth <laughs> like with her words, right? And you thought you were being successful. Dude, I was literally drowning our family. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you this. You're going to go through these kind of mistakes when you're trying to find success. Right. It's just the truth. But guess what? I was man enough to say, hey, you know what? You're right. I remember crying. I broke down. You know what I did? I got up at 5 a.m. that next morning. I went to the gym. You know what I did? That night, I decided I was going to train my sales team because I was doing everything. You're I could doing close all the sales. I right? could close any. Look, my whole team was out there, but I was the closer. I was the best. I could shut everybody down. What good did that do? I was sinking my own life. Right. So guess what? I trained my team. If you got a team, you better train them because if not, you're going to kiss your life goodbye or you'll kiss your business goodbye. Yeah. I decided to train my team. I got back in the gym. I was at home for dinner and our business grew. Yeah. Isn't it freaking crazy? But guess what? Sometimes a person giving you the advice and I hope that you're taking this right now and you're like, dude, I need to do that. It's really hard to take advice from your wife or from somebody that you're close to because you feel like they're being really critical on you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And honestly, that was the day I had decided to grow up and I was like, hey man, I'm going to be a good man. I'm going to listen to her and she wouldn't have told me that if it wasn't the truth. Yeah. So, dude, so many things there. Um, I think for one, the initial reaction of a lot of dudes, if their wife tells them that, especially if they're, you know, you were killing it as the GM. You and I were talking at dinner. I mean, you're making millions of dollars doing that. And, you know, most people are like, dude, she doesn't appreciate me. You know, I'm out here doing this for the family and all this stuff. I and, played that victim. That yeah, was the first thought I had. Right. And then you realize like, yeah, actually, I'm not really doing this for my family. I'm doing it for me. Like I, I enjoy it and I want this prestige. I want the status and sacrificing all this other stuff. And that was honestly, I've seen that story so many times, even at a young age, like I've seen it from older guys who tell me that exact story. I see it happening currently with guys. And it was why I created something called the wealthy way. So those of you who don't know, it's wealthyway.com. You can go get the free course, the free planner, the free um, discord, everything in there is free because I'm so passionate about that exact thing. Look, you can have everything you want. Like you mentioned, you can have great health. You can have a great relationship with your family, with God, you can be very successful in business as long as you just do the right things every day. As long as you create the right schedule, you learn to let go of certain things, yeah. let your team do what you actually want them to do. And for me, it's, it was a weird thing. The moment I started living that way, like you said, my business has exploded. The things that I was doing, my employees wanted to do. They wanted to start taking care of themselves. They wanted to start hanging out with their family. And my company now, we don't work weekends. And do we lose revenue by not doing that? Absolutely. I mean, leads come in on the weekends and it is what it is. But in the long haul, if my employees are having a better quality of life because they're getting to go spend time with their families, they're getting the opportunity to take care of themselves and their health. I think in the long 
long haul, you're gonna win. Yeah, that's it. And by the way, that's called good leadership. And the reason why, I mean, everything you just said, I would love to work for a guy like you when I work, but the deal, and I started my own company because I couldn't find that, right. okay? So we went the hard way, we built it. Thank God we did do it. But I just wanna say that I was looking for that, okay? I was looking for that. Well, I wanna tell you this, as you're going back and you're thinking about like, why did I grind 7 a.m. to 11, you know, work six days a week. When I go home on Sunday and I am with my family, I'm thinking about being back at work again on Monday morning. And you were forced to be on because the dealership was closed. Yeah, and, and honestly, like, and by the way, um, it was because somebody taught me that. Right. Okay, like so, guys, a lot of our bad men and women, a lot of our habits that we have and the way that we are are because someone else has taught that, so it's instilled in our brain. I needed to be reprogrammed. Mm -hmm. So that night, when she slapped me literally with those words and just said, hey, you're, you're a one-dimensional guy, okay? Like you're either gonna step up, be the man that you could be, or this is it. We don't need all this money and all this stuff and not know who you are. Like we, we are disconnected. How many husbands and wives sleep in the same bed, but they're miles apart? Mm -hmm. No ways, no more. Look, and I don't know how much we can talk on this podcast, but I'm gonna tell you, me and my wife, you know, we make love to each other all day long, every day, all the time. <laughs> we work together, we don't get burnt out. We run a sales team that's intense, insane. We're breaking records. We got the life that we wanted. We grind together, we'll cry together, we'll, we'll break together, we'll make mistakes together, we forgive together. And guess what, and our whole team, they, they lead and learn from us. And by the way, I was used to micromanaging people because I got micromanaged. Mm. And when you started giving these people the responsibility, not cutting their legs off right. and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to give you the opportunity to do this. Right. Maybe you make a couple mistakes, but guess what? You're going to get this down. I believe in you. You believe in yourself. You're my guy. You're my girl. You're going to make this work. I know you're going to do great at this. All of a sudden, you got to spend time with your family. They get the fulfillment that they're enjoying it. You're not burning out. Now they've got purpose. And guess what? Everybody's winning. You're growing together. And guess what? That right there should happen in every company out there in the world. Yeah. Well, one thing I'll say too about having those types of balance and, you know, getting away from work, it, it allows you to be fully present and focus on what it is you're doing. Because if I'm just work 24 seven, I'm kind of like a zombie, dude. I'm just like rolling through, going through the motions. But if I'm constantly switching up where it's like, yep, I'm at the gym, dude. I'm focused for this next hour, I'm doing it. Or hey, you know, now I'm at work, I'm here for the next eight hours and I'm gonna crush it, you know, and I don't have to worry about that I'm gonna be doing it for the next 16 hours. Yeah. Then I'm at home with my family. Like it's, it's like life is constantly just, you're getting getting these different aspects of life that makes life so great. Yeah, because people don't burn out, they lose their purpose. Right. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, like, I mean, I'm just gonna tell you, any time in life that you've ever not enjoyed what you had, but by the way, five years ago, you prayed for this. Right. Now, if you look up and you're not grateful today, it's not because you're burned out. It's not because you're overworked. It is because you've lost your purpose for just a minute. You've lost your, lost your gratefulness. So you've got to know when it's time to press on the gas. Look, I always say this. I never let my foot off the gas because I'm never going to let somebody come after me, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I work with a healthy paranoia that somebody's trying to take it all away from the next 24 <laughs> hours. So I'm always like, dude, who is that? Yeah. Right? So I'm just going hard, 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 hard. But I want to say something. You also, like you said, you guys don't work the weekends, either the weekends. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I know we don't work the weekends. Now, does that mean that my team isn't home, isn't at home answering a, a sales phone call by the pool, having a good weekend with their family, or they've scheduled two hours in the morning yeah. to get into the queue and answer a couple leads? Yeah, they, they want to get that, but we shut the office down. We make them get out of there. Right. Because absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yep. When they come back in Monday morning, you know what they're doing? Whoa! They're excited to see the boys. They're ready to and, go, yeah. yeah. And then guess what? Friday, adios. Also, another deal, as you're growing with your company, I said people remember the journey. Those are the grand moments. It's not the paychecks. It really isn't. Everybody wants to make a big paycheck, okay? But that's a one minute endorphin rush. Boom, I got that money. But you know what it's about? It's about grinding with people around you that you enjoy being around. Yeah. Um, one of our hiring processes that my wife hires from the heart, we just did a podcast on Bradley that talked about building an elite sales team. And he said, hey, how do you guys hire? Well, the crazy thing is whether it's right or wrong, everybody has their own deal. We hire off heart and attitude. We'll teach skill. I'm a sales trainer, okay? Like if I can't teach you to speak, talk, work, and all that stuff, and I talk to you for a second and you're afraid of your own shadow, like we're not going to hire you. Right. Okay. I mean, we love you. But we <laughs> There's got to be hired. a certain level. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, but if you've got the heart, okay. Like, I mean, if you're like, hey, I, cause I'll ask you a question and I, and I talked to you about this last night. Hey, what do you see yourself doing 15 years from now? Mm -hmm. And if they say, well, being with you, I'm like, my guy. 
Okay, let's, let's keep going. But if I'm like, hey, where do you see yourself in 15 years from now? They're like, well, I just want to work here until this happens. Well, the deal is I'm not going to invest all my time in that person. Right. Look, there's 8 billion people in this world. For any business owner out there, take your time, find the people that, that you believe what they believe, they believe what you believe, and like literally you can grow together yep. and that way you don't have to start over again. Yeah, I'm not trying to build up you know other people's businesses. Like, yeah, I'm not trying to train my competition to go yeah. across the street and work against me later or waste my time with somebody whenever I've got certain goals and dreams that I well, want. Well, you can. You just got to pay for a different type of thing. You're not working for me. Yes, exactly. You know, pay for um, elite sales training. Pay for future flipper. Like happy to train you to start your own business that way. But if you're working for me, you know, like you said, we want loyalty. We want heart. We want and attitude trust. and trust. And you know, and you'll be rewarded if you work hard. I mean, you told me, you know, a bunch of guys in your company are making over a million bucks. Like there's there's upside, dude. Anybody out there right now? Let me tell you something. Four out of five millionaires work for someone else. Let's just make this clear. It's not all cracked up when it's be to own your own your own business. Okay. It's a lot of work. It's awful sometimes. It's nasty. You know, sometimes payroll is crazy. Yeah. Sometimes problems come up. I mean, just from every aspect. And, and I'll tell you this. If you're working for a company right now, okay, and you've got a good opportunity, guess what? Skill up. That's yeah. it. Give them more. Do you think that a guy like Ryan or a guy like me isn't looking for the next person to come in our company and move the needle and take us to the next level? Dude, we're, everybody's looking for that guy or girl. Yeah. Like, we pray for that. Yeah. But there's so many people coming in and waiting to get promoted, and then they're going to go do it for us. Walk like you run the company. Talk like you run the company. Act like you run the company. Dude, put up the numbers that no one else has ever seen. Do something so crazy that it's undeniable that you are the best. And guess what? You will demand the attention of those owners and they will do whatever it takes to put you in the position that you've always wanted to be in. Right. And I just want to say, you're looking for that person currently. I'm looking for it. Like when someone shows up with that or somebody decides to step up, I've got guys in my company that were always about right here. And then something clicks one day and they just go boom. So I got a question for you. So I agree with what you're saying there. I honestly, like, yeah, we have needs and we hire people based on, you know, the, my best people came on to fill a position that wasn't even there, right? Yeah. I'm just like, dude, this guy is a stud. We're going to find a way to make it work. Yeah. He's going to move the needle big time and it's going to work out. You and I both run our companies very much like a sports team, right? Like your, your guys are like, I was telling your guys, they're like a football team, man. They're all just hyping each other up, like doing all this cool stuff. Um, and I, coming from a baseball background, think the same. And so I tell our guys this all the time. It's like, look, at the end of the day, the best player is going to play. I don't care if you're a vet, if you're a rookie. If a rookie comes in and they're crushing your numbers, who do you think is going to get the leads? Yeah, they're up to bat next. Yeah. Yeah, and I like that. And by the way, that's a good positive uplifting thing to know that number one, if you are number one in your company, guess what? Keep the edge. Yep. Keep training. Keep studying. Keep the passion up, right? Don't get comfortable, right? Because that'll be your Achilles heel. That'll be how they roll in the tro Trojan horse and take you out, okay? you got to crack in your castle, figure out how to kick your own ass so no one else comes in and kicks it. Mm -hmm. Okay, like know your business better than anybody else if you are a business. There it was, guys. Dropping the bomb.